Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, quick intro about myself. My name is Sahil. I work as a senior data scientist at Blue Sky Analytics. We are a climate tech startup uh, based in Netherlands. Um, yeah, we are primarily focused on building environmental data for better monitoring and climate risk assessment. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about our progress on one such data set uh, based on uh, greenhouse gas emissions from forests and farm fires. Uh, this is the outline of the talk. Uh, I'll start with the current state of global fires, followed by the role of FOSS in geospatial application, um, how the GHG emissions from biomass burning is estimated, what are the current approaches, uh, what have we contributed, uh, the results, validation, uh, and uh, what uh, future uh, components we are adding. Uh, so in 2021, we uh, witnessed uh, another season of wildfire events, uh, except Antarctica, all the continent uh, witnessed uh, a long seasons of wildfires. And it wasn't their severe nature that became the cause of concern, but rather the places that weren't supposed to be the front line of climate change saw these events. There are floods in China, there are floods in Europe, uh, Germany in particular witnessed heavy damages, uh, followed by a prolonged heat wave and drier condition, which eventually led to extreme wildfires in the entire Mediterranean. And the worst among them all was the Russian wildfire. Uh, so the scientists suggest that wildfire in Russia have become common and uh, they, they have become an annual thing. But what was strange this year that wildfires are reaching far east and they're burning more and more areas. Uh, in January uh, this year, we calculated and the number of fire events and estimated the uh, total greenhouse gas emission to be uh, 1,000 megatons. Later, several studies published that uh, it is beyond 1,000 megatons. Now, this number is in itself is so high that it exceeds uh, some of the net carbon emissions of uh, some countries across all sectors and not just uh, forest fires. So what is the role of FOSS in geospatial applications? So for starters, it does provide researchers and uh, startups uh, a platform and a head start uh, who are transitioning into the geospatial ecosystem. It provides you open source data and tools uh, so that uh, we can focus more on the use case and application rather than building something from scratch and trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, some of the FOSS project that has enabled this study as well involves DDEL, uh, QGIS, Postgres, PostGIS, um, so how emissions are measured? Uh, uh, there are two techniques. Uh, in order to measure greenhouse gas emissions from biomass burning, you need information on two components. One is total fuel burnt, and the other is emission factor. Total fuel burnt is the amount of fuel you're burning. A fuel could be a piece of wood, a tree, a forest. Emission factor tells you how much trace gas is emitting when you are burning one kg of that fuel. Now, emission factors are pretty standard. Uh, it is uh, recommended to refer the updated ones. Uh, IPCC releases a list of emission factors for different fuel types. Uh, the total fuel burnt, however, is dynamic. You need to calculate either through ground observation or through satellite data and combine them. It requires information on land cover type, uh, vegetation, and burnt area. Com combining them both, you'll get the uh, total carbon emissions uh, for that particular fuel type. Now, over time, different approaches have been suggested, and uh, there have been, which broadly comes under two categories, top-down and bottom-up. Bottom-up, as the name suggests, gives importance to the ground observation. It requires researchers to go to field studies, take the observation, perform small-scale experiments, and then combine the results either with satellite data or more ground truth. Uh, it's significantly uh, this ground truth. Uh, importance of ground truth is uh, really helpful since it calibrates your model estimates. However, this very strength uh, limits the scope of this approach. For example, if uh, performing small-scale experiments uh, everywhere is logistically impossible, especially in case if you are moving uh, for global emission, you won't be able to perform such experiments at every region and every uh, different vegetation type. 
using coarse resolution data also uh, also becomes a point of uh, underestimation as some of the small scale fires doesn't come doesn't fall under this uh, coarse resolution and significantly underestimates their contribution especially for agricultural burning and agricultural uh, majority regions which doesn't comes under 500 meter or 1 kilometer spatial resolution the methodology also has a delay or a time delay component for example burnt area data sets only gets available months and weeks and months after the event has already passed uh, creating a delay in sharing the information uh, such as burnt area top down on the other hand is primarily based on satellite observation it relies on frp which is an attribute of fire fire radiative power it determines the amount of radiative energy coming from the fire and it links this frp with aerosol which is another satellite data aerosols are the soot particles that get released when uh, biomass burning happens and it links this to calculate directly uh, the co2 emission now eliminating any form of uh, performing small scale experiments uh, and thus skipping any form of uncertainty uh, however uh, the methodology does have a limitation uh, most of these uh, linking process of AOD and FRP happens at regional scale, which get extrapolated to uh, different regions, the same values, and then gets, uh, uh, the emissions are estimated, which doesn't generally uh, generalize and are not uh, robust approaches. GFAS is one such uh, study which is based on a top-down approach. Now, after comparing the benefits and limitation, we started to develop a global data set that can accurately estimate hourly greenhouse gas emission in real year time. Uh, we chose the top-down approach because the objectives were aligned and it acts as a right reference point which can be easily extended and can easily be refined. Uh, we also uh, try to, we also aim to overcome the limitation faced by the top-down and bottom-up approaches. Coming into our approach, uh, there were three objectives. One, how can we uh, improve the small scale fire detection? Because that certainly has a, a significant contribution, um, as I mentioned, especially in the agriculture majority countries. Uh, how can we eliminate any form of uh, manual monitoring or the regional based uh, models that I mentioned? And how can we improve the ancillary data, which is like emission factor in using the most updated factor? Using high resolution land cover map from ESA and uh, VR's fire data significantly improve uh, the contribution uh, and the detection of small fire. Uh, uh, using uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Using machine learning, uh, using machine learning to eliminate any form of uh, local experiments and expanding that to create more generic and more robust uh, global models that can be easily, uh, that can be easily uh, compete with uh, spatiotemporal features which are available in different vegetation that are uh, generally not available in empirical models or local models. We further uh, compile a list of studies that can include the more uh, recent updates on emission factors that help in further refining our estimates. These are the three core products that goes into uh, the model. Uh, FRP tells the amount of radiative power. Aerosol tells us the amount of particular matter concentration. Uh, we further validated our aerosol value with a ground network of Aeronet sensors at uh, 550 nanometer. And the vegetation type that, tells, that accurately uh, classifies the vegetation type or the fuel type that is being burnt. We further validated our study uh, with different existing uh, independent studies. Uh, two of those are GFAS and GFED. GFAS is primarily based on uh, a top-down approach. GFED is based on a bottom-up approach. Uh, on the first look, it finds a good agreement between our estimates and the validation set. Uh, although we do see some extreme bias, uh, especially in regions of uh, Russia and uh, Southeast Asia. We further investigated uh, this uh, particular pattern. We found that these two regions are particularly dominant in two vegetation type. Uh, Russia is primarily for their boreal forest, also known as taiga, and Southeast Asia for their peat estimation. 
Now peat is a kind of plant and soil type which doesn't uh, smoke as compared to the tree type and it mostly smolders for days without being detected by the satellite sensor. So we're trying to find an alternative way uh, with high resolution data so that we can contribute uh, the peat emissions which are generally not uh, included in uh, both, the, both the studies. We found uh, very uh, consistent uh, results with GFED uh, also because uh, they have recently started to use VS fire data to boost uh, their small fire detection ability. Uh, this displays the comprehensive nature and the uh, uh, different resolution type that is available. So you not only know the greenhouse gas emission for a country, which is often reported by uh, several inventory, but you also know the uh, emission levels for different counties, for different cities, so, so that you can attribute to different sources. We are also a proud founding members of a Global Coalition Climate Trace, which is led by US ex-Vice President Al Gore, with an aim to monitor greenhouse gas emissions across different sectors, such as shipping, electricity, power plant, and uh, land use. We contributed annual greenhouse gas emission data for under land use uh, and forestry category, also in managed land. The data set is also a part of uh, several studies uh, based on the impact of fire on different infrastructures and the study of carbon sinks. So how to get the data? The, the data, the entire data is available through an API portal and all the tutorials regarding its access and analysis and what you can uh, extract is available in tutorials. So what are the current challenges? I mean, we did uh, refine the estimates, but uh, some of the current challenges are still there and we are working on it. Um, polar satellites, use of polar satellite has its own limitation. It covers, it provides you snapshot, which doesn't cover the entire cycle of fire and it significantly underestimates the fire contribution. By adding geostationary, we can cover the 24 hour cycle, but it does introduce its own uh, issues, which is uh, low, higher resolution sorry, coarser resolution and uh, local region, local coverage. Lack of ground truth is also a challenge because we estimated our, our own estimation against model estimates, which technically are not uh, ground, uh, ground truth. Uh, and in forest fire domain, it's very hard to find ground sensors in the middle of Amazon or in any wildfire conditions. Uh, so yes. So what's next for us? Uh, in order to improve uh, the uh, forest coverage, uh, uh, fire coverage, we are harmonizing the polar and geostationary so that we can take the advantage of both. Uh, the real-time coverage, the high-resolution coverage of uh, polar satellites and 24-hour coverage of geostationary to uh, basically improve the fire diurnal cycle approach. Uh, we are working on introducing carbon sink, which is the amount of uh, carbon being taken out from the atmosphere when the vegetation regrows, uh, since uh, UN expects countries to report their emissions in net and not gross. Uh, ground truth is another uh, area of concern. We are trying to uh, approach uh, commercial partners to find uh, uh, high resolution greenhouse gas data so that we can compare our estimates with that. Uh, so that, that's it for my presentation.